Well, good morning, and uh, thank you, Mary, for that introduction, and congratulations on your appointment as the interim CEO of Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And let me also uh, welcome to Nashville Mr. Pearson. I uh, hope you'll have some time to look around the city and to enjoy all we have to offer here. Um, I am really glad to see such a great turnout for today's event. Now, I know that there are many familiar faces here, people who know a lot about Big Brothers and Big Sisters, your contributors, your volunteers, your givers. Thank you so much for your support of this important organization. There are some others here, and this is your first exposure to the program. If you are thinking about becoming involved as a supporter or as a donor, think no more. Just do it. This is the real deal. I haven't always lived in Nashville, and I haven't always been mayor. I, I moved here in 1978 to go to law school, and when I finished law school, I stayed here. I wanted a job where I could go to court, so I took a job in the public defender's office. It was an eye-opener in a lot of ways. One part of the job that I guess I was just not prepared for was the number of children getting arrested and getting arrested for very serious crimes. With a lot of these children, if they only had a caring adult, someone to praise them, support them when they made good choices, someone to correct them when they got off track, their lives may have taken a different course. And I didn't forget that when I became mayor. Those years, those 16 years in the public defender's office, really formed a lot of the way I think about what the, our city's needs are. Um, I am a firm believer that education um, is the most important thing our city does. I think public safety is vitally important. And I see those two. And I see those two issues as being integrally related. I believe that public education is the great equalizer. It is the way out of poverty. It is the way out of crime. But if we got to keep kids in school, we funded the Student Attendance Center, which works hard to keep kids going to classes. Since we opened the center, our truancy dropout rate has reduced dramatically. And that didn't just happen. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of work on part of the juvenile court. It took a lot of work on part of the police department. And it took a, a lot of work on the part of our schools. It would not happen if our teachers weren't taking attendance every period. It wouldn't happen if our teachers and our school system and our city was not sending the message to our kids that we care if you go to school. And if you don't go to school, we're not going to give up on you. We're not going to write you off. We're going to get you back in school. The one thing we can never forget is there are absolutely no throwaway people in this city. Last year alone, our student attendance uh, center referred 30 families to big brothers and big sisters. 25 of those families stuck with the program, and that's pretty good. One of my favorite ways to relax is to read. I read all kinds of books, all kinds of stories. And a while back, I came across an account of a young man, a teenager, who had gotten into trouble, enough trouble to get him locked up. The kid, all of his life, had lived just a few doors down from a neighborhood church. The kid hadn't been in jail too long before the members of the church recognized that he was missing, that he was in jail, and they came to visit him. And they brought presents or food and things to try to make his stay in jail a little bit better. And of course, the kid was happy to receive the, receive the gifts. The, the kid was happy to receive the visit. Um, after all, he was a teenager. And like all teenagers, he wanted attention. He wanted someone to care. He enjoyed their visit. But the cold reality of being locked up never left him. When it was time for the visitors to leave, they asked the teen if he could, they could do anything else for him. And he had a question for him. He had mixed emotions. He was confused, even. He thanked them for coming. He genuinely thanked them, and then he asked a question. He said, I've been living in this neighborhood all my life. You have all been right up the street the entire time. Where have you been? I wonder if you had come to help me before, would I be here now? No, I don't want to sound preachy. Um, not at all. That's not my background. As I told you, I'm a lawyer. I, I don't preach. I just deal with facts. Way too many kids come through our legal system. They came through it too often when I was the public defender, and they're still coming through it. Most of them, I would say, at least 90% of them, come from single-family ho homes where uh, they're being raised by their mother and their mother alone. 
In Nashville, we have over 22,000 households led by single moms who have children under the age of 18. Half of these moms, 49%, live below the poverty level. Big Brothers and Big Sisters offers an opportunity to help their children now. So thank you very much for being here. As I said at the beginning of my remarks, Big Brothers and Big Sisters is the real deal. So get involved, contribute, support this worthy organization, and help improve our city. Thank you.